Welcome to another episode of Nietzsche Roulette, the uh, online video game based in the Caribbean where we can gamble on uh, metaphysics. Am I right? That's the new intro. All right, let's start it up. Random number generating. Oh, and my co-host here is Salome Sibone. Say hello to the audience. (laughs) Hello, audience. Welcome to Nietzsche Roulette, the podcast segment where we interpret quotes from Nietzsche and connect them to our modern day tribulations, chaos, and catastrophes so that you may become wiser and more interesting to your friends and enemies. So let us begin. Let us begin. Random number generator has generated 563. Now this is from Human All to Human. Book one, we've just been sticking with this book because there's all kinds of aphorisms in here. At some point in the future, we'll move to a different book. 563, easily resigned. One is, oh, one suffers little from disappointed wishes if one has trained one's imagination to blacken the past. A heavy silence I hear on the other line. Oh, I, I'm uh, just making sure there's nothing else to follow. Well, Nietzsche nope. is saying have no regrets. That's basically his his version of like YOLO. One suffers little from disappointed wishes if one has trained one's imagination to blacken the past. No so you won't regrets. be disappointed if you forget the past. He's either advocating um, amnesia, selective amnesia, or becoming a blackout drinker. And I think both of those can be fun. Those can be fun. Um, Just, you know, sparingly. So try not to have too many things that you need to black out in the past. How about that? From disappointed wishes. (laughs) Guess it's just a way of saying... He's kind of saying that, like, people that don't f- analyze their life are not going to have to be disappointed, I guess. Because that's what he says, disappointed wishes or something. What's the first part? One suffers a little from disappointed wishes if one has trained one's imagination to black in the past. But you have to train your imagination. So your blackout drinking amnesia thing doesn't apply to this. Yeah, you're right. Well, Train your imagination. It's pretty uh, clear. It's pretty clear what he's saying. I don't even think it needs to be translated. It's just straight up like if you don't ruminate over the past and you catch yourself like a person that trains the mind does, which is, oh, there I go being like, oh, why did I do that? And I catch myself and I say, nope, we are not going to feel shame as we try to go to bed over that one time that I mispronounced the word in the spelling bee on the stage in seventh grade. If I catch myself and I say, nope, We're not going to go there. And I let it go. And then I move on. I, in a way, blacken that memory. And I am no longer going to be disappointed because of it. Disappointed. So, yeah. I don't know. You seem to be uh, perplexed that Nietzsche would suggest something that seems to be the opposite of self examination is that it seems like you have pause because this does seem like something that Nietzsche wouldn't advocate it almost seems like to me that he would say something like this tongue-in-cheek as if to be like yeah you'll have nothing to feel disappointed about if you train yourself to black out the past you know as if kind of a little bit with a barb in that implying that someone that wants to be never disappointed in their life, would have to black out their past. Well, it just doesn't really, I'm not really sure. Because, okay, assume that your interpretation is correct. You're still going to be disappointed in the future. So you're just going to have to constantly keep forgetting every day that you exist, unless you live a perfect life or whatever. 
which then would forestall your ability to plan the future at all. I mean, it seems a little bit like, a, you know, I mean, we covered the film, uh, what was it called? Johnny Mnemonic or whatever. It wasn't that. It was, um, what, what's the fucking Memento. No oh, Memento. Memento. That Memento. Guy Memento. <laughs> you said it the way I kept saying it. Memento. Yeah. Momento, that movie with what is the actor? I don't know. Keanu Reeves. Uh, Blacked out. He just that didn't. Fast. No, it's not Keanu Reeves. I know that's what I'm joking about. It. I wonder I don't if know Keanu Reeves suffers little from disappointed wishes. I don't think he does. I don't think he suffers too much from disappointed wishes. He seems like a fairly okay, chilling guy. He's going about life in a fairly chill manner. He seems like a person that possibly in the future will commit suicide and then it will like stun people for 12 hours or however long they care. But, you know, I mean, every now and then you get one of those. You get you get one of those you didn't see coming from left field. Well, and if you, know? you bet on celebrities, then your betting odds go up. You know, just I think tragic ends tend to follow around fame and power and money. So it's a good bet. Anyway, back to Nietzsche. Back to Nietzsche. So what do you say? Do you advocate blocking out the bus? I think that this is not meant to be taken directly. I think that if I know Nietzsche, and I do, I love Nietzsche. Silence. You don't even understand him right now. What are you talking about? You don't. I do. I don't think he's actually meaning this in a proscriptive way. I think that because of the the conclusion you just made which is that would be a life where you can never really go forward planning anything and that you have to forget everything that you've done I don't think Nietzsche would advocate something like that so I feel like this is kind of these things that yeah if you wanted to um, avoid disappointment you would have to do this but then look at how silly and unpleasant that would be Thus, don't be the person that wants to avoid all disappointment in their past. Are you disappointed in your past, Justin? This isn't a fucking tell-all talk show. You get so mad if anybody asks you a personal <laughs> I don't talk about, no one. That's not what anyone tunes in for. I'm not very disappointed. I'm not very disappointed. I, don't, I didn't ask you. I'm telling you. This is not <laughs> right, don't right. ask, don't tell. This is don't ask and get told. And I'm telling to you. That I back the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling Different. you that I don't really feel that much disappointment, even though I have plenty of things that I could choose to be disappointed about. You know, feeling behind on things, whatever mistakes, not figuring things out earlier and doing things earlier. If I had started blogging when I said I was going to start blogging, I'd be a fucking millionaire right now, okay? I Do you think I don't think about that sometimes? Like, oh wow, if I actually did that thing when I had thought about doing it, I'd be swimming uh, Scrooge McDuck style in blog money right now. I could dis- I could be disappointed in that, but I'm not because I choose not to look at it that way. Instead, I choose. You failed. You failed to block in the past because, <laughs> because you've told me that exact same gripe like a decade ago. You told me that same thing. You're like, if I had only started blogging true. back when blogosphere began or whatever. So you clearly haven't I'm not- gotten over but I'm you not know, blackening the past, you fool. That's you're exactly supposed the to. thing. He says no, you're I, supposed to. He's not saying that. He's not saying you're supposed to. He's saying if you wanted to avoid disappointment. But here's the other, the other way is to just be like, yeah, I didn't do that. That you know would have been better if I did, perhaps. <laughs> but then just letting it go. Now I don't have to blacken my past because I don't feel the need to escape from any disappointments from it. I just let it be what it is. Let it be as some of our, the great minds, the only great minds that have come out of England once said. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm disappointed in this episode, to be honest with you. Um, I don't like this aphorism particularly. I don't think you understand it. No, I understand it. It seems a little too simplistic for me, honestly, for Nietzsche. But I mean, you know, it's a one sentence thing. It's number 563 in the book. He's probably getting tired. And, um, I get it. It's also earlier Nietzsche, this this thing. 
And I understand it. I'm fine with it. Don't, I don't, don't, I think don't imagine, wrong. don't lose yourself in imaginings. I think you're wrong. You I think you're taking it uh, at face value and I think it's not meant to be taken at face value because it's so contradictory to Nietzsche's usual line of thinking that I think it is meant to um, like kind of exemplify a flawed line of thought. I don't think it's prescriptive and that's why I think you don't understand it. So you're saying he's saying do the opposite? Yeah. You're wrong. I'm more right than you. Don't you don't understand anything. At least I have a theory. Yeah, it's the wrong theory, though. I mean, anyone can come up with something that's just wrong and say it, <laughs> as the internet has proven. Um, all right. Well, you know, I would say that, no, I think that he does believe in just forgetting about the past and continuing to um, continuing to move forward. That's what that's what the Ubermensch would do. And uh, so I actually think that he does mean it. This well, kind of seems like you could take it and make it into like one of those little like plaques or whatever. That, like if you if you tweaked past. it a little bit, it would just <laughs> yeah, like that kind of... those like um, wine mom <laughs> yeah. plaques that are wooden and have like that hand the cursive handwriting, and it's just like yeah. live, laugh, black in the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess that's what's throwing me off. But I also I fell asleep on the floor right before this. That's one way to so, black in the past. I drink that coffee. All right, so. Uh, coffee yeah, cl- closing thoughts oh you shouldn't be drinking coffee that's my closing thought no one asked you closing thoughts how do i deal with the past what do you have in the background is it like little people climbing ropes <laughs> oh great i want to talk about this so at the uh, um advice comfort. of a friend of mine that is in film he was like shitting on our podcast because he was like, your background is so boring. It's just a blank wall. And I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Build a bunch of bookshelves like people do. But then I realized, let me just shift. And then at least I'll have things. Like I'll show off my wine collection. Nice. But this this art is not my choice. Um, But it is something on the wall, right? So it adds some like dynamism to the video. But the thing is like, isn't this kind of like, doesn't this feel kind of Soviet to you or like brutalist? Yeah. Seems kind of fucking silly to me. Uh, kind of <laughs> Soviet silly. Uh, yeah, it's fine. And I, 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 you know, it's fine. It's better than my background. I will say that there's a certain type of podcast that it's unfortunate. And I'll end on this. <laughs> certain podcasts, you can tell they're for real. Or they're not for real. And the ones you can tell, I don't want to say anything, I don't want to cast any aspersions, but some people have a very, it looks like, well, it looks, it looks professional. There's a middle ground, which is a dangerous ground in all things. And so there's some podcasts that look like they're trying to approach television production levels. But they don't really have a set designer. And so what happens is it'll be a guy talking about whatever it is. And there'll be like a little uh, Ikea kind of wall box with like a candle in it or something. Yeah. And yeah. then like books arranged, but they're like one of them's tilted over to look, make it look like it's natural, but it's not natural. Someone like th- that person did that. Um, and I reject that. I it think is we artifice. Think- it's the worst kind of artifice because it's not even it's artifice that tries not to be artifice, which is the worst kind of artifice. Like either be completely false or be real. Don't it's that middle ground that you're talking about. It's artifice that tries to fool you. And I won't be fooled by artifice. Well, I think we'll just end it there. And uh, I will. Uh, <laughs> I will. This one was called easily resigned and I easily resigned this match of Nietzsche roulette. I just feel like I, I, uh, I really untermenched it. (laughs) Yeah. So we need to come up with, we need to come up with Nietzsche in terms for the game show. (laughs) You either ubermensch it or I don't know if unter is that, I don't know if that's the (laughs) one for small man, but it sounds like it would be. I hope it is. Untermensch it is really good. Or last man it, whatever. Anyway. Okay. Listen, um, sign us out. Yeah, I am. I will. Um, Silver Eye members, it's really important that you give us your feedback. Do you think that this background looks Soviet and or brutalist? 
I really want to know, should I go back to the stark white wall? Or do you like this little bit of pizzazz in the background? Let your voice be heard. But before you do that, make sure you're subscribed. Subscribe to This Over Eye Society. Like this little video. It's a meaningful gesture. If you really want to get crazy with it, you really want to make my day, you could leave a review on Spotify or Apple and be like, I fucking love this podcast. They tell me the secrets of the universe, something like that. I will give you the creative freedom to choose your words and see you on the next episode of the Silver Eye Society.